We've got 11 things you never want to do once you get on board that Disney cruise ship. And number one is a bit of a surprise to people. Never open your stateroom door and veranda doors at the same time. As a general practice, if you have a veranda stateroom on a Disney cruise line, you will want to use that veranda door to open and close quickly. Go outside, shut it behind you, come inside, shut it behind you. The key here is shut it behind you. If you do not, if that door is standing open, there are multiple things that can happen. One of them is you won't be able to open your stateroom door. It creates a vacuum in there and that stateroom door is not going to open. Another thing is you do not want to have both of those doors opening at the same time because as we just said, it will force shut and that can get little fingers. Just be very aware of your stateroom door and your veranda door. Your veranda door basically should always be shut. One of the fire safety features on board a cruise ship is air pressure. With the balcony door open, that air pressure will drop in the cabin. And if there is an emergency, it's not going to respond the same because of that airflow or lack of airflow, should I say. On the Diz boards, Princess Shmoo states, quote, if you're interested, cruise ship cabins are designed to have a slightly higher air pressure inside the cabin than outside the cabin. If there is a fire outside your cabin, the overpressure inside will cause smoke and flames to move away rather than move into it. But obviously, if veranda doors are open, this pressure is not going to be the same. So it is literally a fire hazard. It's also a bit of an annoyance because the air conditioning will not work the same. And not only will it be your air conditioning that's not working properly, it will be your neighbors as well. So there is a huge impact on the ship if that stateroom door is open. The most prevalent issue is going to be those fingers and toes. You don't want any of those to get caught in there either. That's not a lot of fun on your cruise. Number two, don't expect your cruise to go exactly as planned. It is absolutely easy to have a fabulous cruise and everything works out just perfectly, but that is not always going to be the case. If you come into a cruise knowing that you might need a little bit of flexibility, that really does help. Weather can cause port delays, missed ports entirely, and there are other reasons that you could actually not be able to go to a port if there are issues on the island. These are rare. The weather is much more prevalent and sometimes they can't even dock at Castaway Keys. So it's good to know that in that cruise contract, it does state that you have to be open to variations on the cruise. So just go there, have some fun. Of course, you want all your plans to work out. That's why you went, but you can protect yourself a little bit by making port excursions through Disney Cruise Line, which brings us to number three. Never book a port adventure without doing your research first, especially if it's third party. There are multiple points that you want to consider here. If you book your excursion through a third party and there is some type of weather issue, that is going to be between you and that third party. You're not necessarily going to get your money back. If you book a port excursion on Disney Cruise Line and they don't make it to that port, they typically will not charge you for that port adventure. Now, regardless of who you book your port adventure through, you definitely want to do a little bit of research. Most important here are going to be age minimums. If you have a younger person in your party, you'll want to make sure that that port excursion does allow their age. Some of them will not allow under two. Many will not even allow under eight. So make sure you check the age minimums. As well as those minimums, you want to verify what the activity level is going to be and that everybody in your party can handle that activity level. Some of these port excursions are very on the ground, a lot of movement, which will create a lot of heat, especially in humid environments. Make sure that everyone in your party is prepared to deal with that. And last, make sure that you know when the hours of the port are and what the transportation time is. If it takes you an hour to get back from a port excursion and the ship's leaving in an hour and a half, that's probably a little too tight. Any tiny thing can really mess you up with that tight of a turnaround. I suggest making sure your port excursion will end like three hours before all the board if you're with a third party. And just to be clear, these excursions are port adventures that are on Disney's website are not actually run by Disney. Most of the time, they are actually those third-party vendors, but they are affiliated with them through Disney's website. That's why they have those protections as far as refunds or rescheduling. They will also typically be a bit more expensive because of those protections that come with it if anything is canceled or delayed. And that brings me to number four, never, ever, ever get back late for the ship. Part of that is making sure that your port excursion will be done in time, but another part of that is at customs. Those lines that are in customs have taken me by surprise a couple of times, especially if there are multiple ships in port, those lines will get longer. So before you get off the ship, make sure you verify what time the all aboard is. And then I would tell yourself that it's actually an hour earlier, just to a lot for any time you may need to get back with plenty of time to get through those lines and get on the ship. Because if you get back late for that ship, they will leave without you. If you are on a Disney Cruise Line excursion and you get back late for the ship because 
because of the excursion, they will wait for you. But if it's third party and you get back late, well, that's just too bad. You're going to have to figure out what to do. So just make sure that your excursions will be back in time. And if you're not sure what that time frame is in the Navigator app, which pro tip, download the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. You'll use it for everything. Within that Navigator app, they will show your itinerary and the all ashore and all aboard times for your specific port days. Number five can be really annoying. Sometimes people like to play their music really loud. If someone's on their veranda playing loud music, that means everyone around them can hear that music as well, and not everybody is going to want to. So a common courtesy on cruise ships, on private islands, and on those balconies is to just not play any music at all. There's typically already music going around in the area. Or use some headphones, keep it really low. It's just really nice when everyone is conscious of that and can enjoy their vacation the way they want to. Number six, never bring banned items on on a cruise ship. We actually have a whole video on banned items for Disney Cruise Line. We'll link that down below. Go check that out. There are some surprising items on there and some are just truly bizarre. But the main point here is never bring banned items on a Disney cruise ship. It can get you from just a little bit of trouble to the item being tossed. Typically they will confiscate it and give it back to you at the end of the cruise depending on what those items are. Which brings us right into number seven. Don't try to sneak anything on the ship either. Sometimes people try to sneak alcohol that's not allowed or wine coolers that they think should be allowed. These are the most tame things that I've seen people talk about sneaking onto the ship. But if it's not allowed on the ship, there's a very good reason for that. Any item that might be sneaked onto the ship really isn't necessary for a good cruise. There's just no reason to risk that, really. In the cruise groups, a lot of people will ask if the wine cooler or malt beverages are allowed. They are not. You can carry on two bottles of wine or champagne or six bottles or cans of beer per adult over 21 per Port. The beer and wine must be in your carry-on bag. Some people do try to sneak in coolers or malt beverages to try and bypass that rule. Sometimes when it doesn't work, they'll confiscate it and give it to you back at the end of the cruise. Sometimes they'll take it and just throw it away. Regardless, it's no way to start off with a Disney cruise. It's a luxury vacation. Budget a little bit of money for some alcohol. You're definitely going to want that. Or some mocktails. They have really great mocktails on board. A drink of the day cup is available on the first day. You can get the drink of the day for like $6 refills throughout the rest of the cruise. So those are some good options. Number eight, never use regular sunblock when you are on the ships and at the ports. To identify these, these will be labeled as reef safe, reef friendly. Typically, this is going to refer to sunscreens that do not contain oxybenzone and octanosate. These are UV blocking chemicals and they can actually cause coral bleaching. Even if you're not going swimming, it is still important to use reef friendly sunscreens. This affects the entire ecosystem and is really vital for it. These chemicals are bad for the coral, but it's also damaging to marine life. So when you get your sunscreen, make sure that it says reef safe or reef friendly. As a matter of fact, if you go to Hawaii, it's the only type of sunscreen allowed. Number nine, don't try to do it all. You're not going to be able to. Okay, if you're on the transatlantic cruise or Panama Canal cruise, you might be able to do everything, but that's still unlikely because they add more activities for those longer cruises. If you enjoy Disney cruising at all, you are most likely going to pro tip, get a placeholder when you are on the cruise ship. That's a $250 deposit towards any cruise in the next two years and will get you 10% off that cruise as long as you book it while you are on board. Those are only available on board the ship. With that placeholder, you're going to do more cruises, so leave some things for later trips. To be honest, you could very easily plan absolutely nothing for your Disney cruise and have a fabulous time. The first cruise we ever went on actually was a three-night Disney dream. I had one champagne tasting scheduled because I had heard about them, but that was it. I didn't really know about anything else. And as a single mom, I was on a super budget, so we just really enjoyed the trip. I had like a $20 stateroom charge because I had gotten a drink and my son had gotten a smoothie and a couple of coffees at the Cove Cafe 18 and over coffee shop on board. And that was it. We had a fantastic time. We didn't even have budget for placeholder at that point in time. It was really just about the cruise and enjoying the experience. There's so much to do on the ship. You do not have to have all these extras booked. And to be honest, all these extras will take away from some of the magic and the joy of just enjoying it. So that is why I say make sure you have some downtime in your schedule to really just sit back and enjoy it. It's why you're there. It's easy to get caught up. There's so much fun to be had, especially if you've got tiny humans on board. Specialty dining, bingo. There's many things that will cost money. They are just not required for a good time on the cruise ship. Of course, they're a lot of fun. There is one thing I try to do on every cruise. I didn't know about it on the first cruise though, and that's Match Your Mate. That is 18 and over. It's a game show that will be in the club in the evening. It's so funny. And Jack Jack's Diaper Dash, where they raise babies. 
<laughs> also, a lot of fun. And you don't have to schedule in those stage shows, but make sure you go to one. They are phenomenal. It's Disney after all, and Disney really knows how to put on a show. Okay, number 10 is a little bit controversial, and that is to never travel without trip insurance. We have traveled with and without. I didn't notice a difference because we didn't need to use it. But if somebody gets into a situation where they really need that travel insurance, of course it's going to be a big regret if it wasn't purchased. And number 11, you never want to lie about health prior to getting on the ship. They will give each person a health questionnaire at the port. And for the health of everyone, it is important that nobody lies on those cards. If you like this video, please share it with a friend. That's the best way you can really help us grow, and we really appreciate it. If you are interested in dining, we have a dining master guide for absolutely everything food on the ship. We also have 10 mistakes newbies make and 27 Disney secrets you can check out as well.